Hey, again about competition in the team. We are recording so many videos about that, but yet another one will be helpful. Um, one of my uh, listeners, Denise, asked me on YouTube in one of the previous videos about the competition, making an example of a team uh, in order to, uh, to oppose my idea about competition. The example is this. Uh, let's say we have a software team and uh, we have a competition in the team. So we basically encourage people to compete against each other and the best performer wins and the, <clears throat> the less productive person loses something and maybe you know, has to go find another place to work, something like that. So we design a competition. And then in this team we have a few people who are top performers because they are experienced, they, they know much better than everybody else, they may be older, they have more experience, and so on and so forth. So they always perform better than everybody else. And then we have the rest of the team. They are less uh, productive people and they always produce less, less output, less, less results. In this system we will, according to Denise, we will always reward this first group of people, let's say one, two persons, reward a lot because they are definitely top performers and then the rest of the team will be demotivated. They will see that there is no chance for them to become as, as great as this small group of top performers and they will quit. Or they will be demotivated and they will stop working, they will perform to the lowest, uh, to the lowest speed they can and so on and so forth. So the team will be um, separated on the two groups and the, the first group will perform a lot and the second group will get lazy and so on and so forth. And, and because of this, because of this example, uh, Denise claims that uh, the competition is not a good idea in general. So it's better, according to him, it's better to reward everybody. All people who are doing at least something, they have to be rewarded. You're a top performer, you're not a top performer. We give everybody some rewards in order to encourage everybody to move forward at least somehow. My first question is that, what is wrong with the group of people in the team who don't perform and they get demotivated and they decide to quit. So what's wrong with that? What is our goal? What's the, what's the, what do we want to achieve? Do we want to keep the team together or we want to win? They're two different objectives. Of course, it's better to achieve them both. Of course, it's better to, to win, you know, keeping the same team uh, as we had it when we started the project. But the most important for us is actually to win. So if these top performers, they achieve as much as we need and then the rest of the team don't achieve and don't perform and they decide to quit, then maybe it's good for the team because we actually will have free space and free, you know, free budget available for new people to join. We have a team which is unbalanced and when we start the competition, we will very soon see that and people will quit automatically, naturally because they will understand that they need to find a better place to work. They need to find a team which will be more balanced for them. Let's say uh, we are in sports situation. We have a team of people who are in different categories, two like world champions and then like 10 people who are just starting to, to run, for example. Of course, they cannot compete to each other, but they shouldn't be in the same team. We need to move these guys to another team and then invite more world champions to, the, to our team. So this, this situation, this competition will automatically, quickly uh, identify the problem we have. The team is unbalanced and it will become more balanced. That's my first point. The second point, uh, I think that uh, in most teams right now, in most software projects, the main objective actually is not to, uh, to win, is not to finish the project, is not to deliver some product, no matter what they say, our managers. But the main objective right now is to keep the team alive. Keep people on board. Don't let them quit. Don't let them go to other teams because the demand is so high on the market and the supply of good programmers is so short right now. So current situation on the market dictates the rule, the rules. And, and the current situation is definitely not very good for the competition. So if you I understand this. So if you right now set up a competition in the team, then the team will become unstable. People will quit, you know, low performers or people who don't want to become top performers. They will more or less automatically, they will quit. And then your management who is looking at you, if you're the manager, they will see some problems at, at, at your team. They will see people leaving. They will see that the, the ratio of people staying versus people leaving is not in your favor. They will think that you're not a good manager and so on and so forth. So they will eventually 
tell you to stop doing that. They will ask you, they will tell you that for us it's very important right now not to win anything because it's, it's much less important comparing to the amount of programmers we have in the team, especially in large corporations. They only care about headcount right now. And that's why they don't encourage, they don't, uh, they don't like competition, they don't, don't promote competition because they want to keep the team alive. So if you are in this situation, and at the same time, you, uh, you, you are okay with your team being unbalanced, then yes, the competition is not in your favor. But always remember that if you don't have the competition, if you keep the team unbalanced, and if you care only about the head count, then the first person who is going to eventually quit is the top performer. Because not celebrating top performance and not uh, giving their huge awards to top performers, it's the first step uh, towards losing these people. But if you don't care about that, then of course, no competition is good for you. For these two simple reasons, which I mentioned. So, Denise, your argument makes sense in current situation. But if we would like to build a team which is going to win, not to survive, not to stay alive in a few years or in a year, but to actually win against other teams on the market, and actually, but actually become the best team on the market, then we need competition. And yes, we're going to lose many people while we're moving towards the, the final result. Yes, we're going to lose low performance, many of them. And probably the team will be rotated maybe two or three times before we get to the final finish line. If you can tolerate that, if your management can say okay to that, if they are okay with firing and hiring and, and all this process, then we need competition. I hope I made it clear and logical. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.